Okay, so the first thing um, we have, if we're looking at ODKs, we have this um, Excel tablet, um, Excel form. So what we're really shooting for um, is an application that can be taken out into the field. So when we're testing this, we actually use a program called BlueStacks, which is an Android emulator that'll run on your tablet. I mean, it'll run on your Windows-based product as a tablet. So you can test your stuff out and you can see how it looks and works. That's one way. <clears throat> but we also have, like we were talking about, the online uh, testing tool that will validate the forms. And I'll show you that as well. So BlueStacks is great. I used to play Minecraft with the kids. You know, the variety of different reasons for that. Um, but it's, it's a good product. It, it provides a lot, of, um, a lot of functionality. So we'll start there. So let's just let me show you a collect form and I'll show you the form itself and then I'll show you kind of how we get to that point so what we have is this is sort of what ODK looks like when you come in raw you can imagine this being on your handheld device but it's actually on the screen a screen here all we're looking for is to create a form and all the form is in terms of ODK you have to think of a form in a different fashion to a form you might design for um, like if you're working in access or something like that where you pop a form up and you can interact with it and do a bunch of stuff a form for ODK is an entire set of pages that coalesces into what would be a paper document so if you think of going out into the field with a piece of paper and filling out that piece of paper as a form that is what a form is to ODK a form is not each page in the application so that's a, an important distinction to keep in mind. So if we're going to fill out a blank form, we're going to fill out a blank piece of paper. We're not going to fill out one particular page or one particular Windows dialog. That is not a form. A form is an entire piece of paper. So what we can do is we can say, okay, um, let's pick one of these guys to do. And what we just did when I brought that up is we went to the server. Well, essentially we went to the server a little before this. And we looked at all the forms that were available, and we pulled a copy of the ones we selected down. So let me show you that real fast. So if I'm going to grab a form, I can click get a blank form. I'm not sure this is going to connect. We'll see if it will connect over. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, depending on um, the availability. But it did here, which is fantastic. So if you look here, up on our KCI aggregate server, which is the open source place in the cloud where we're headed to all these different forms or paper documents are available for us to download and fill out so we could pick any of these we want and simply click on it and we say get selected and so we make a connection to that web hosted environment grab that digital implementation of that paper form and bring it down to our handheld device and I've already brought most of these down already so I don't need to bring another copy down and then what you do is you would say, okay, I want now that I've got that form down on my local machine, what I want to do is then fill it out. So you can just click fill blank form. And then at that point, you pick the form you want to fill out, and then you get into your actual work. And so this is where ODK is nice because it also allows you to manage workflow on your mobile device for the people in the field. So we'll take the example of what we did for the NCDOT recently when we went out to look at their mitigation sites as an example. You click on the form, <coughs> and if you've already started editing one, it'll give you the whole list. If you just want to start from the beginning, you can click go to start. And if you think about this, it's very intuitive. You can just drag your finger across like paging through a book, or you can also use the toggle buttons at the top, and it simply pages you through the form. And so you can fill the form out however you would like as you go through. And you can put, you can put controls in here, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what filling a form and what a form looks like in ODK. So let's take a step back then and show you how we design one before we go all the way through the whole process. Um, so if I'm designing one, I do it in Excel like we talked about. And so if I'm going to say, okay, I want to create a bunch of questions that I want my person in the field to answer, and I want it to be stored in a very logical and, you know, re retrievable way. You can look at this um, with the Excel mindset and just say, okay, each item I'm going to fill out is essentially going to be a row in the Excel table. If I want any control inside of that 
process, I can add if then statements as well. And so inside Excel here, you see if I want a, a text box filled out for the site name, I simply tell it I want a text box filled out. I want to call the name of the text box um, MIT underscore site underscore name. And then the label I want to appear for that information is stored in the label category. Now, let's explain what happens now. So I fill out my Excel spreadsheet. I put all the text boxes on. I put any controls I want in there for flow. And then I can put radio buttons on. I can do date pickers. I can do a, ask it to help me take a picture. I can have a place where I can edit the picture. So there's a lot of different functionality that ODK has out of the box that allows you to do. Once I get that all kind of in here, after I've got that, I have to take that Excel spreadsheet and then convert it into something that can be interpreted. And so there's a program out there that is supplied. And it is a program that, uh, see here, right here. Actually, I'm not sure if I have it open anymore. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay. It's called XLS Form. An XLS Form is an application that you run, and it takes the Excel spreadsheet and reads it, and then it converts it to an XML document. The Excel the XML document is easily translatable into a form once it makes it up onto the web, onto the server. And so what you do is you simply run this application. And it takes my finalized form here, NCDOT Inspection Report XLS, and dumps it into this output folder as an XML file. And this XML file just looks like any other simple XML file. And it basically takes that Excel spreadsheet and interprets it into this XML document. Okay. So now we've gotten to that point. Now we have taken our Excel spreadsheet, we moved over to an XML document, and now we want to see how that spreadsheet translated. What you can use then is you can use a, uh, a piece of software that is up on the web that is called Enketo, if I'm not mistaken. And Enketo is nice because it lets you test that form out and see how it's going to look on your mobile device without actually having a mobile device present. So before you upload it. So what we'll do is we'll grab that file and we'll display it. So I click an XML file. I click the, the button to grab my XML file. And I come up here and I grab my XML file. And that is an XLS form output. And then what you'll see is this thing will take a second to churn and then it'll throw that up there on the screen. So here's your form that you built in Excel, translated to XML with a free tool, and then you push that to this testing validation routine. And in here you can see how your form will look. So if we were to pull the Excel file up next to it, kind of see that side by side and kind of see like what I'm talking about here. Here you've got uh, dying. <laughs> so for mitigation site name you have mitigation site name is the label. Underneath of that when you fill this in the MIT underscore site underscore name field receives the data. And so here you've got this form that you've, you've taken care of. You filled out the whole form. So let's take a look at some of the options we've got in there. <coughs> we have radio buttons. You can pick on counties that we were going to do. We have um, whether or not we've, we have some you know, yes, no boxes that control flow. Um, if you get down here, what's kind of nice, there you see these two boxes here that see if there are any natural changes or any man-made changes. Inside that Excel file, you can actually put some flow of control so that if there are any natural changes to the site, you click yes, it opens up like a subset, a sub panel. You can start filling out what changes were there. Was there flooding? Yes. Okay, if there was flooding, yes, tell me about the flooding and get me a GPS coordinate of where it's at. So now you've kind of bored into the application a little bit farther. So now you're just collecting simple data about a location, but now you've got a GPS location, you've got um, you've got a discussion of where it's at, you've got comments about it, and then what's really nice is you can actually attach a picture in there as well. So here, um, 
Ups. Ups, let me get back. Okay, collect an image for the flooding. Sorry. You'll see this when we get to the actual implementation of BlueStacks. But you can actually collect a picture. So the picture is associated with a location that's taken outside of the picture location that's stored from your phone. So if you've got a Bluetooth GPS, you're going to hook the Bluetooth GPS to the uh, Android application. And now when you take your picture, you've got the description, the photo, the GPS location, and all the information, descriptive information about that all in one place, all managed for you for free. So that's where kind of where the power of this thing starts to mount. Now you've got a really, really nice, rich data set that's available to you. So you can go through and fill the whole thing out and then finish some final questions. And that's sort of what the testing phase looks like. So now if we want to push it over, we simply just upload it into our aggregate server and it becomes available. Now anyone who wants to grab that form and uses it, goes up to the aggregate server like we just said a couple minutes ago, clicks the checkbox, grabs the form, it comes down, now they've got it on their phone. And so when they go to fill it out, like we were showing a minute ago in BlueStacks, they go ahead oh, and they fill out the form. So now if we go in here and we're going to go in and fill out the form, Spectrum Port 2, and let's say we go down to that photo location for flooding. Let's say there's flooding, yes. Let's click here. Whoa, I get in there. Okay, so you've got the GPS coordinates for the flooding. You can record. So this is how it looks when you're going to do the GPS off the device instead of in that form validator. So if you're going to click the record location, you click record location. It's going to go look. Obviously, I've got no GPS on my laptop, so it's not going to resolve. The nice part about that is, is you can you can also tell it to keep observing your location until you hit a certain level of accuracy. So you can set that way down low, like three meters, two meters, and you can sit there with a the Bluetooth and it will average those points out until you get in close enough to your, your level of accuracy that you want. If you take a picture, you can click take a picture. It'll look for the phone. So you can take a picture of your eye, how you doing? Um, and then that's stored there. You say done. And so now I've got a, a picture available and then I can also make comments about the flooding and then you can kind of move on. The nice part about it is, is if you've got multiple flooding instances, you have multiple animal instances, uh, multiple animal damage instances or things like that at a site, you can add like as many of these as you want. So you can have all kinds of pictures over your site, all with locations, all grouped by type. All that's possible here. So it's, it's kind of nice. And then in the end, you kind of walk your way all the way through the whole application. And I'll show you, right, it kind of gets, if you're doing a long, a long form like we are here, it takes a while to kind of bore through all your data. But in the end, you name the form. So this is where we come back to the idea that this is a form you're filling out, a piece of paper, and not a specific Windows dialog. When you name this form, so you name it like, um, you know, Eric's new form, that is saved. So that essentially stores that information as a grouped unit of information in the database. So let's take one step back. You've taken that Excel file now. You've posted it to the database. When you go through the activity of posting that XML file to aggregate, the thing that I didn't talk about that's very powerful is that the software is written as such as it populates the entire database with tables, all the relationships, all the data that you've got about that form is created for you. You don't do any table, table creation. You don't do any database management. That's all handled for you. So that's very powerful as well. And so then you can exploit that on the other side to drive reports based on the database design that's been built for you. So, um, I'm, okay. and so what I'll show you, the last thing I'll show you is sort of the result of all that work. What you can end up with is you have, this is that form we were just looking at, this NCDOT and Site Inspection Report 2. This is the data that our field crew went out and collected. And so you can see all these different pieces of information that are stored in the dashboard. Um, I'll swing over here to the side. In here, you'll see the photographs. Our guys chose to just, you know, shoot some shots, not really do any comments unless they really had something going on wrong. So there's things like that. You can then click on the photo. But at this point, you know, you know you have the data in there. You know when they did it. You know how they did it. That kind of thing's available. But there's, you know, you can also visualize it through here. Like if you wanted to see, um, let's say you wanted to visualize like acres. 
and you want to view it in a pie chart, you can view your site that way. Um, if you wanted to view like the number of ones that had that you walked the boundary on, um, you know, they walked the boundary on 76% of the sites, but 23 they couldn't. So all that data is stored right off that handheld device. So it's it's very powerful. Um, your data being in in somewhat of a aggregate form. But um, once again, you know, you're kind of dealing with stock tools. So where KCI kind of comes in, in in the sense of like, okay, now that I've got this data in the database, what are we going to do with it? Um, we've pushed it out as, into ArcGIS Online, just reading it directly from the database and displaying the points as an event theme. Um, and then as a part of that, you can click on one of these guys and get the information. So this is that information that we've stored. This was an application we did for... Um, when you're looking at a poll and it's got power information, I mean power data, it's got different pieces of like transformers on the poll, and the transformer has different components as part of it. This was an application we did to basically inventory the poll, look at the components on the poll, and see if a fault tamer was present. And so there was some information they collected about that. That's what we did for them. Uh, this is for Duke on the side. They wanted to see a couple of communities done really quickly. So in this case, my uh, technician came in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and said, I have to be out of here by 4. Can you get me a mobile application that I can go out, shoot some locations at polls, take pictures, and then throw it up in ArcGIS online by the end of tomorrow? We were able to get the thing out in an hour. They were able to put it on their form from home that night, put it onto their tablet from, uh, from home that night. They were to go out and collect all that data, and we were to put it up in ArcGIS online by the afternoon. So it's pretty powerful. Um, I'll, I'll, one more minute. I got okay. And then one last thing, we're able to drive custom reports uh, through SQL Server online reporting. And so that data that's lumped into that MySQL database, then we can pull out and show it however we want. So not only do you have like the data stored as a point, but then you can take the data that's stored as a point and you can drive it into a report. Okay. So here's the re here's the result of that report. It takes a while to run that because of the fact that it has the photos in it that are stored in the raw format. And so it takes a little bit to display that. But yeah, if you go up to odk.org, opendatakit.org, I think it is, um, under use, I think it is, there's the different ways. And inside XLS to form, it has a design, it has a simple Excel file, and it kind of just shows you how to, um, you know, basically look at it from a basic um, approach. And so it talks about the way to design and things like that. So it's it's really nice. So here's like the question types. And so here you have like the select one, the select multiple, um, the geo point, and it, it walks you through how to do that.